Hi, I'm Jamelia Escobar. And I'm Naomi And today is our first year of Teen Talk. Welcome. The subject for today's Teen Talk is mental health. As you all know, it is Mental Health Awareness Month, or I hope you know. <laughs> hey, Naomi. Yeah? Did you know that 18.6% of African American adults deal with a mental health condition? I actually did not. See, there's a lot to learn, but let's not make it too long. Let's welcome our host for today. As you know, let's give her a hand. Thank you, guys. If at any time you guys feel comfortable or feel the need to talk to anybody, I can be nervous in your audience. So it's all about this. Y'all can hear me? Y'all can hear me good? Yeah? Okay. Hi guys, I'm Nevaeh, as you already know. I'm 16, I'm in the 11th grade. Um, and basically, I want to say like my triggers, or when I first learned that I was depressed or whatever, had been when I started noticing that I wasn't acting the same, because like, I started acting different in school, started ditching class and whatnot started getting bad grades, and then um, I started noticing that I had, when I went to sleep, I would just kind of like start begging, I guess, or kind of wishing that I wouldn't wake up. So I was just like, okay, something's not right, you know? And yeah. Thank you. My name is Fernando, and um, I'm a senior. I'm 18. Um, I was diagnosed with um, depression, and the way I got it was um, I would think about I'm alone and no one cares for me, and I like, and um, like other things like thoughts and how I, I don't know like others how they would go with it and. I would tell myself I'm useless and other things. And yeah, that's about it. Hi, my name is Donnell Abney. Um, yeah, I also been through depression, but how I got there was like I from a very young age, I was kind of surrounded by death, or that's how it felt to me. Like, I was just almost always one of the last people somebody who was going to die would talk to. Like, I was there just holding their hands as they were getting weaker and just taking their last, like, breaths of life. And that, that really got to me, like, I, most of those people, I wasn't even ready for them to just leave me behind like that. And like something in me snapped one day and I just started beating people up like around me. I became like <laughs> a very violent person. That wasn't really like a good way to deal with what was going on in my life, but that was just the easiest for me. Hi, I'm Shushu. Um, I am a sophomore. I am 16. And my diagnosis is still in progress um, as we speak. Um, and the reason being, when I was six and just recently, two months ago, I was raped. And I just came out with it probably a month and a half ago. Um, 
And what triggers like different things, you know, such as anger at different times or feeling sad um, is seeing people who look like the people who have raped me or um, just different actions that people do. And, you know, um, that's it. Uh, my name is Carla Del Cid. I'm a senior. I'm 18, and I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety. I was hospitalized in February for planning my own suicide. Um, when I was about eight or nine, I was sexually abused by a family member, and it continued on until they eventually left the house. So. Now, every time somebody mentions like that certain family member or a name closely related to, or somebody looks sort of like them, it's just a big trigger. I have relapsed, I cut myself, I starved myself because I was disgusted by my own body and what happened. But now I, I got help for myself. I didn't go to anybody in the beginning. I just recently came out to our counselor, the senior counselor, uh, De La Torre, and she helped me through everything. And from there, I put myself in a hospital because I knew I needed help. And now I'm going through therapy and I'm I guess I would say I'm better. My name is <laughs> My name is Damaris. Um, I'm 17. When I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety when I was a little girl. The cause of it was because I was molested when I was a little girl and because my dad got deported. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I want to say. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's go to Arise and let's get feedback from you guys in case have any questions. Does anybody want to say anything? Don't be shy, guys. Anybody want to speak? Have a question? Anything? So we have somebody that want to speak. You want to stand up? Hi, I'm Victoria. I'm 16 years old. I'm a, I'm a junior. And um, I want to ask for advice. Um, I was adopted into an African-American family. And best believe, like I love them with my entire heart, but a lot of people have messed with me throughout the years for one, being adopted, two, it being an African-American family. Um, being adopted has given me like an exposure to being bullied enough. People used to tell me that nobody wanted me, or people in my own adopted family used to ignore my parents and like basically my sisters because like we were a different color, so they'd be like, nah, let's not invite them to any places because they don't want to seen, be seen as a like quote unquote freak show. Um, and racist people used to harass us for being a different type of family. So how would you guys deal with that? Okay, I'm gonna just come out with this. Um, I was taken away from my parents when I was seven years old. Um, and I was put in the household of my grandmother who abused me physically until I was 12 years old when I moved in with my aunt and uncle, which I do live with now. Um, our family's kind of different because, you know, I am part Filipino and you see two black quote unquote parents. And my younger siblings look exactly Asian. So it's, I understand what you're going through. Um, one way we do cope with that is um, we do pray for those that are religious. Um, and we have family discussions about how we feel and we feed off of each other's support and we do everything to help build each other up because we do know we are a different type of family.
Do any of you guys want to talk about bullies? Darnell? You want to talk about bullying? I, I was not bullied. I, I kind of was a bully, so I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about your experience as a bully then. Um, well, my experience as a bully, I think it's pretty common. I, whenever I got mad or I felt like somebody who was just looking at me the wrong way, I'd go up to them, intimidate them, and if they shove me, I'd knock them out. It, it's, it's pretty common, I guess. Like, I guess the, I guess how I grew out of that was kind of extraordinary. Um, one day at church, um, one of the deacons came to me and they said, you look, you look like you're troubled, boy. I'm like, um, I'm good. Well, like, you got suspended the other day, so you should be troubled. I'm like, yeah, I just got into a little fight. Well, why are you getting in a fight? So I'm like, no reason. He started. He, he, he threw the first punch. Why you got to knock him out like that then? I just felt like it. He said, I know you been going through a lot. Like your grandma just died and then a week after your uncle went to and then a week after that, your cousin, like there's literally a chain of death. So I get why you were a little bit upset. No, it does not bother me. Like, I, I'm good. I, I was lying. Like, I, I was just enraged. Like, you can't just vent your anger through punching away your problems. That's going to, one, ruin your fists, and two, going to get somebody else hurt. I knew that all oh, too well. I just didn't care. It was the easiest way to deal with my problems. It calmed me down, so I just stuck with it. Then one time um, at school, um, after I was suspended and I was let back, um, got into another argument with like a kid who was a little bit younger than me. I, I pushed him right into a brick wall, and like he started, like he hit his head, and like he actually started bleeding, <laughs> like oh. I thought I done killed a guy at that point, like, but this is the strange part. Um, that kid, he got up and he's like, he, he hugged me. He, he genuinely hugged me. I'm like, I didn't know how to respond to that. I, I stood frozen, like, I'm like, I just, you, you could, you could have been dead right now and like instead of running away instead of crying you're you're giving me a hug I, I was kind of shocked and just like I don't know what that did I know what that did it it just changed me I don't know why it did though like I don't know why it happened or what went down but like something inside me just clicked after that point and I just let everything go that's it Well, as you guys know me, I'm Damaris. I always fought. My whole entire life, I've been fighting, obviously. Until this school year, I still fought. And I'm still trying to mature myself to not get mad at things. I try my best. I really do try my best to keep myself together. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if I could consider myself a bully like you. <laughs> I mean, um, I could relate to him a little bit on uh, how people would look at me. I'll automatically start assuming they're making fun of me or they're talking or whatever. Like, I'll just go up to him and just start talking, talking until we fight. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's all I could say. 
is that I fought my whole entire high school, middle school, and elementary. Um, I had anger issues, and um, I'm still here trying to control myself. I actually have a wonderful friend. She always controls me, obviously. She, <laughs> I don't know how, not even my mom could control me, but she could control me. I don't know how she deals with me, but I'm just saying that I'm still here <laughs> trying to control myself. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, wasn't the bully, but I was the one that was bullied. And you know, it's kind of just nowadays, like it doesn't happen. But you know, back then, I just like I would ignore it. But you know, before that, it was just like horrible to me, you know, it was just, I don't know, yeah. Does anybody have any other questions? Jalen? Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> I gotta stand up. Oh. Hey. Um. We're gonna backtrack a little bit to like the first topic, which is mental health, and it's for Carla, actually. Um, what made you feel like it was okay to hurt yourself? Um, I just felt like that's the only pain that I can control, you know? Like, I was physically hurt by somebody, like emotionally hurt by somebody that I thought I could trust, that somebody, you know, normally trust, but when that hurts and you can't control that hurt from that person, it's just like you feel like that's the only pain you can actually control. Like you cause yourself that pain. You know how to deal with that. So you just feel like that's the only thing you can do. So to sum it up, they made you feel less than yourself. Can you repeat that? Can they you? made you feel less than. Uh, yeah, I guess it's basically just like I'm, it made me feel more connected with myself. And it also made you feel like nobody cared about you after it happened? Uh, after the fact that I did come out with it to my family and I wasn't emotionally supported by my family, then I did feel like that was the only thing I could actually turn to. And then when, now that I'm getting therapy and I'm getting my help, I haven't cut in like, or starved myself in like two years. I'm getting through it. Um, every time I feel like that, I just, I just call somebody. I talk about it. I don't think about it too much because if you think about it too much, it gets to you, you know? Like, you just sit there and you cry to yourself, you cut yourself or something, but you should just talk to somebody. Even if it's like a stranger, even if it's like a friend that you don't know, like as well, talk to somebody. We have um, a child services person here. Uh, we have counselors, social worker, my bad. Um, we have a social worker, we have counselors, they, get, they can give you information, you can talk to teachers, even if you don't know them as well, it doesn't really matter, they're the help that you can get on the spot. So I have a question. Demari, do you want to add something? Yeah, I want to add something. I kind of went through what she kind of went through. I was hospitalized seventh through eighth grade. I was a suicidal. Um, some of you guys know, some of you guys don't, but um, I kind of felt what you felt in seventh and eighth grade because I felt really, really, really disgusted about myself. I was a troublemaker. I didn't like to be known. I wanted to be, like, I didn't want to be known. Um, what really did help me, what really, really did help me was getting hospitalized. I always thought that, oh, I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy. But in reality, if I would have never gotten help, who knows where I'll be right now. Um, I still get therapy. I actually take medication. Um, I don't take it because I want to get 
help on my own. I want to help myself. I do talk to my mom when I feel down, when I get, when I, I could emotionally get, like, I could break down out of nowhere. Like, I could be happy with my friends out, but I'll break down. But I'll text my mom, and my mom will calm me down. So that's the only thing she could calm me down on when I'm sad. <laughs> but my th actually, therapy really does help. So for you guys that don't really speak up, I suggest you guys do because it really does help. It helped me a lot, like, a lot, a lot. Like, my counselors helped me through a lot. Like, I talk to all the counselors. Like, I talk to everyone. They always ask me if I'm good. It would bother me in the beginning because they would think that if I also do the things I would do in middle school, here in high school, but in reality, they just cared. And I never saw that, but... Like she said, talk to teachers, to counselors. I specifically just opened up to Ms. Chandler, and she was amazing. She hears me out. She, she's just amazing, and I appreciate you so much. <laughs> and that's it. So I have a question for you, Damaris. What's the root of your anger? So rude? Yeah, your backstory. Why are you so depressed and angry and want to fight all the time? Um, I get depressed a lot. Um, I have anger issues since I was a little girl. I feel like I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm still here. Um, by answering your question, why do I want to fight a lot? I really don't. Sometimes I really don't want to fight. Like, I really, really don't. But like I, can, I still push myself. Like I still push myself. Like okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I have anger, like really, really bad anger, and I try to control myself. Why do you have so much anger? Because of everything I've been through. Like I've been through so much since I was a little girl. I have anger. I never got it out. And like if somebody says something or they look at me wrong, I assume you're saying something. Like. I just have so much anger in me. Like I was never helped. As you can say, my, when I was molested as a little girl by my uncle, um, my mom did report it, but my grandma was always there defending my uncle. Like, and what got me so angry is that he never got to pay for what he did to me and my siblings. Like he never did. So that until this day, I still hold this anger. And I try to let it out. I try to just let it out smooth. But if that answers your question, I have, that's where my anger comes from. You done? Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. All okay. right. Yes, I do. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions? Nobody has any questions, comments? Um, my question for all of you guys is, um, instead of hurting yourselves, do you guys often like do something else to calm you down? Like for me, like I don't want to say I have it, but like sometimes I feel mad or stuff like that, and I either play soccer or just listen to music. What else do you guys do to calm yourselves down? Um, when I was in the hospital, they taught me a couple of coping skills, which is basically you can write to yourself, you know? You just get, get a journal. Write what makes you mad, right? Like what makes you sad, or you can color. I know this sounds childish, but you can color. Um, it makes you focus on the coloring, the, like just how you're gonna color it or whatever, but it makes you not think about it, you know? It keeps your mind off of it, or you can listen to music, or just talk about it. Either, or you can look at different coping skills. It's not just like, oh, this is how I want to do it. I want to color, I want to journal, I want to do this. You can do whatever makes you happy, you know? Me? Um, I work, <laughs> so that distracts me from a lot, a lot. But here and there during work, it hits me, but since I talk to my coworkers, because obviously your coworkers, like they're your coworkers. You could you don't trust them like that, but 
they won't say anything. Everything like stays and work. So I work, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's what helps me. Um, for me, how I cope. Um, I write. I sing. I'll dance, and you know, sometimes people will be like, you know, how can you dance in times when you feel like this? Well, I personally, I find a song that compares to how I feel at that moment in time and just make a dance for it. Uh, how I cope with it is um, listening to music, um, doing things I love as well as theater, and you know, it distracts me from having those thoughts. And it's just other things like writing as well. Um, I think that's all I could think about right now. Oh, okay. There's not one like specific thing that I do or I like go to to like get my anger out or whatever, but certain things I'll just like I'll cook or I'll clean write sing well not sing because I'm a terrible singer but um I don't know like there's just there's everything you can do walking the dogs but definitely definitely talking to someone it sounds crazy but probably I know it sounds crazy but talking to yourself kind of just kind of getting like, why am I feeling like this? Or if you don't want to write it down if you're not a good writer, or if you can't express yourself creatively, like with, um, like Shushu said, like dancing or singing, just kind of have like a little conversation with yourself, or I don't know, like I said, cook, clean, but yeah. Okay, so I actually have two questions for the audience, so I want you guys to participate. So, do you guys know So you guys, this is basically the end of our um, talk. I would like everybody with the index card to basically either write a question or anything that you need to be answered on the index card and put it inside these three um, boxes right here. Well, cans. These three cans right here and then Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, questions, or anything that you want to be answered or anything, or you want to talk privately, Ms. Chandler is here, and you can just write them down and put them in the um, cans. One second. Hi. Um, as they mentioned earlier, um, I'm actually uh, one of the licensed clinical social workers. So I actually do provide therapy to some of our students here at Fireball and throughout the district. There are a lot of other students that I link to, um, to agencies within our community that provide individual and family therapy. So some of these students I have actually worked with, um, and I've seen students in the audience that I have actually worked with. Um, and so first I wanna commend you guys for coming up here and sharing your stories. Um, it's an incredible, incredible that you you come up here and you shared what you did. And I just ask that everyone be respectful of that. Um, I think it was very personal, the stuff that they shared. So please, um, please be mindful of that and be respectful of that when you leave here. Um, and I know that they, they wanted to share this with you to bring awareness, right? Because it is Mental Health Awareness Month. So, so your peers are making letting themselves be vulnerable for a moment so that they can perhaps um, give you the opportunity to to speak out or to get help if any of you are going through any of this 
Um, you know, there are people, there are adults that all of you are able to connect with. I hope that there's one adult, at least, that you're able to seek, out, seek help from um, so that you can start on that path um, to, to healing or taking care of yourself better. Um, so I, I commend you again, you know, for being strong enough to come up here and sharing that and, and encouraging others to take that step. From the film studies class to NAMI to NTHS to GLAM to Educare, ASB, and all of you guys for coming and being respectful. Also, the people who spoke, Mr. Rollins, Mr. Perciado. Also, Ms. Graciela, can't forget her. Okay, thank you guys.